Hi, I'm Saurav. Recently, we have looked into why service providers love MPLS. We found that it's really about two services, MPLS-based virtual private networks and MPLS-based traffic engineering. These services cannot be easily supported by plain vanilla IP networks, and older ways of providing these services have gone away, making MPLS the preferred solution. In any MPLS network, there are simple data plane mechanisms of pushing on, swapping, and popping off MPLS labels in a label-switched path. In addition, there are a number of control plane protocols that control the operation of these networks and provide the services they enable. Any change to these services, however small, or the creation of a new service necessarily involves changes to these protocols or the creation of an entirely new protocol, both of which are lengthy, time-consuming processes. And yet, the data plane mechanisms remain the same simple push, swap, and pop operations. With OpenFlow, we take a different approach, which allows us to go beyond what MPLS provides today. With OpenFlow, we can readily provide all the services that MPLS networks provide. But more importantly, we can make changes to existing services or create new ones by simply changing the networking applications that run on the network operating system. New capabilities are no longer tied to extensions to protocols that need to be implemented in each and every router in the network. And OpenFlow doesn't need to change either, for all it gives is control over the simple push, swap, pop data plane operations, which remain the same. To demonstrate that we can replicate what MPLS provides today, we built a system where we emulated a wide area network with multiple instances of OpenV switch, an OpenFlow enabled software switch, which we modified to include the standard MPLS data plane. We used OpenFlow as the only control plane protocol and then layered a traffic engineering service on top of our system. Traffic engineering is the art of steering traffic over routes that are not necessarily the shortest path in the network. Amongst other things, it aims to avoid congestion and utilize network resources more efficiently. The MPLS solution involves creating tunnels and routing traffic through them and using several tunnel features that help in maintaining and manipulating these tunnels. We will demonstrate these features without the use of the MPLS control plane protocols. Our GUI shows flows for three different traffic types, represented by the different colors in real time, originating in San Francisco and destined to New York, Kansas, and Houston. The traffic is initially routed just like in a regular IP network that is, based on the destination IP address and taking the shortest path in the network. We can see that this can potentially congest the links between San Francisco, Denver, and Kansas. We start the traffic engineering process by creating tunnels between San Francisco and New York and between San Francisco and Houston. Notice that the traffic gets auto-routed from the IP links onto the tunnels. Characteristics of the tunnels can be gleaned from the sidebar such as the route the tunnel takes over the physical links, the bandwidth each tunnel reserves, and the current utilization of the tunnel. We see that the two tunnels created are still routed over the San Francisco-Denver-Kansas links, but the cumulative bandwidth it has reserved in those links is 823 megabits per second. That leaves only 77 Mbps of unreserved bandwidth on those links. So if we try to create another tunnel between San Francisco and Kansas, with a bandwidth reservation greater than 77 megabits per second, the traffic engineering algorithm forces the tunnel and the traffic it carries to be routed over the underutilized links between San Francisco, Seattle, and Chicago. We can also create tunnels of a specific traffic type. For example, the San Francisco-Kansas tunnel accepts only video traffic, while the San Francisco-Houston tunnel allows all kinds of traffic. And we can load balance traffic flows over a tunnel and IP links. For example, traffic flows between San Francisco and Kansas are routed over the regular IP links between San Francisco, Denver, and Kansas, and also over the orange tunnel, which actually takes the Seattle-Chicago route. We can assign other properties to tunnels. For example, this tunnel between New York and Houston has auto bandwidth turned on, which makes its bandwidth reservation track the usage of the tunnel. And this tunnel between New York and Phoenix has a priority of 1, which actually makes it lower in priority than all the other tunnels which are priority 0. The tunnel priorities come into play when interacting with the auto bandwidth feature. 
Note that both tunnels originating from New York are routed over the Kansas-Houston link, nearly maxing out the bandwidth reservation possible on that link. Now since auto bandwidth is on, on the yellow tunnel between New York and Houston, any increase in traffic through this tunnel will be tracked by a corresponding increase in its bandwidth reservation. But such an increase will not be possible on the maxed out Kansas-Houston link without bumping off the lower priority New York-Phoenix tunnel. Here we see the blue lower priority tunnel forced to reroute over the Atlanta-Miami links. To summarize, we propose the use of the IPMPLS data plane with a simple control plane based on OpenFlow and demonstrated an existing MPLS traffic engineering service in a prototype software system. This effort required less than two months of work by two graduate students. With this platform, we expect faster innovation in MPLS-based networks, which could involve optimizing existing features like fast reroute and auto bandwidth. It could also involve creating new ones, such as control planes for MPLS-TP or multi-layer networks.